Yep, you guessed it, another question on the electoral potentials topic. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so the cell diagram, so we've got the Fe3 plus 2 plus solutions in this beaker here. You can have these either way around, by the way. Um, you need a platinum electrode, external wire through a voltmeter to a chromium electrode dipping into one more per decimeter cubed solution of chromium 3 plus aqueous. Forgot to mention that these both need to be at one more per decimeter cubed as well. Um, don't forget your salt bridge connecting the two solutions and it's got to be dipping into the solutions. The conditions, 298 Kelvin, I've already mentioned the concentration, but there it is again, one mole per decimeter cubed for all of the solutions. You don't need to mention anything about 100 kilopascals of pressure because there's no gases in this cell. The next part of the question asks for the overall cell reaction. So while we've got the table on the screen, I'll just mention that. So you can see that the iron 3 plus 2 plus redox system has the more positive electrode potential. So its half equation is going to run in the forwards direction, which means that the chromium 1 is going to move in the reverse direction. And so all we need to do is multiply the iron 1 by 3. So we've got three electrons so that when we add them together, they cancel. So it's basically going to be 3Fe3 plus plus chromium gives 3Fe2 plus plus Cr3 plus, which I've got there. The standard cell potential is the most positive minus the least, so it's 1.51 volts, and the chromium electrode, remember that's got the least positive electrode potential, so therefore it is the negative electrode. So part B, what's happening here? Well, the dissolving chromium-3 chloride into the chromium-3 plus chromium half cell so therefore the concentration of the Cr3 plus ion is going to increase. That's going to make the um, half equation for the chromium 3 plus chromium uh, move more to the right hand side. Which will make the electro potential get more positive. So if we think about um, how we calculate the cell potential. This is the electro potential for the ion 3, ion 2. If this gets less negative or more positive. And obviously, when you combine the two, you're going to get a smaller answer. So part C now, the half equation for the methanoic acid electrode in the fuel cell. So that's our overall equation. That's what we've got for one of the electrodes. So obviously, we need some methanoic acid, two moles of methanoic acid. We've already got the oxygen. We don't want the 4H plus and 4 electrons in the overall equation, so we'll make them products for the methanoic acid one. We've got the two waters, we haven't got two CO2s. So that gives us that there, so technically we should cancel this down. So if we divide everything through by two, we get that. And for the last part, one advantage of this fuel cell over a hydrogen fuel cell, so you can go for methanoic acid being a liquid, and therefore it's easier to store or transport than hydrogen. Or you could go for the fact that methanoic acid isn't flammable or it isn't explosive, whereas obviously uh, hydrogen is.